Minimalism. As I've mentioned several times before on this channel, I'm a pretty big geek. And for those of you who aren't aware, I also have a gaming slash general technology YouTube channel because commitment issues, clearly. <laughs> so this video is kind of like the coming together of both of my YouTube channels into the one thing. Ooh. When it comes to video games, I don't exactly have the same minimalism standard that I would with something like clothes, general household items, friendships. <laughs> because clothes, boring. Video games, not boring. I still have a standard, it's just a lot more relaxed when it comes to video games. Using the KonMari method, for example, I can confidently say that video games bring me a lot of joy. That being said, a few years ago, it got a little bit out of hand. Yeah, this is what my childhood bedroom used to look like. Absolutely chock full to bursting. Almost everything you see here, I ended up either selling or donating. When every single cupboard, drawer, surface in my room was chock full of collector's editions, memorabilia, video games, action figures, I did not feel joy. Shockingly. So after many, many, many culls and clear outs, this is what I have in my house that I live in at the moment. So even though I do still own multiple consoles, quite a few physical games, multiple controllers, and yeah, even some collectibles, it still feels really minimal to me in comparison to what it used to be. And like most things in life, you're only really in competition with yourself. So screw everyone else, as long as you're improving. To be totally honest, I do still have some video game stuff with my parents, like my old Game Boy and Game Boy games. But I mean, why would I ever get rid of those? So I'm gonna show you how I try to stay intentional with my video game purchases and maybe give you some hot tips and tricks in order to do the same. Because when you got too many things, you don't really appreciate any of them. It doesn't matter how many special editions you have, if none of them feel special. Wow, that was so wise, Alex. Slap that shit on Twitter. Let's start off with controllers. These days, controllers come in so many fancy colors and limited edition variants that it's really easy to get carried away and before you know it, you've got 20 different colored controllers for the same console, which is a little bit impractical because you can't use them all. If this is you, try and think logically about it. Like, how many controllers is the absolute maximum that I'll ever need in a single situation for a console? The Switch, for example, I realized that I'll be playing, at most, four-player Mario Kart. I have the Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu Edition Switch. It came with a Pikachu Joy-Con and an Eevee Joy-Con. I also got the Switch Pro Controller for my longer, more serious single player gaming sessions. So I thought, logically, I only really need one more Joy-Con to be able to play four player Mario whenever I want with my friends or family. So I ended up picking up a pre-owned green Joy-Con controller from EB Games. So now one player can use each of the three Joy-Cons and one player can use the Pro Controller, which is maybe a bit of an unfair advantage, but if there's only two people playing, the other person can use the Joy-Con grip with two Joy-Cons. Works out pretty well. As for the PlayStation 5, I actually ended up buying both of the new DualSense colors, which wasn't really intentional. It was a bit of an impulse purchase, which is unlike me. However, I decided that I really like both of these colors and I'm just gonna sell my white controller because I definitely don't need three. Special mention here to USB-C. I love USB-C an irrational amount. It satisfies a lot of efficiency slash minimalism needs. I can charge my PS5 DualSense controllers, my Switch Pro controller, my actual Switch, my Mac, all from the same USB-C charge cable. It reduces clutter because you don't have to have a bunch of different cords. And because of that, it reduces the frustration of not being able to find the correct cord. When I go somewhere and I'm packing my MacBook and my Switch, I only have to bring one charger along. Now I just wish that iPhone would swap over, but they won't. I mean, I could just switch to a Pixel or something, but I'm too far into the Apple ecosystem now. I can't get out. Help me. Let's talk about physical versus digital games. When thinking about minimalist gaming, it probably seems logical to choose digital over physical. But there are positives and negatives to both, and at least in the last couple of years, there have started to be some really great deals on digital games, which makes them a lot more enticing. However, if you wanna buy a game on launch day, it's pretty much guaranteed to be more expensive if you buy it digitally. And this is whether you buy it on the PlayStation Store, the Nintendo eShop, the Xbox, whatever, Steam, it doesn't matter. It's almost always more expensive digitally. 
For example, Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate for the PS5 is currently $115 on the Australian PlayStation Store. Compare this to the physical edition at JB Hi-Fi or Amazon where you can get it for $95, $20 less. But let's go through some of the other pros and cons of buying digital. They take up no physical space, so they're neater and tidier. You can travel with them. No matter where you go, as long as you have your console and an internet connection, they'll be there with you. If you move, you don't have to pack them, you just have to pack your console. In some instances, the games will load faster. This is a very important one. If you're gaming and you want to swap games, you don't have to get up. You can't lose them, unless somehow you lose your login and then you lose them all. After a game has been out for a while, digital stores tend to have some really good sales particularly on things like complete editions or gold editions that have all the DLC previously released for the game in one big complete package. Let's talk about going to actual stores. If you buy a physical edition of something, you either have to order it online and wait for it to be delivered, or horror, you actually have to go out to a store, which these days, no. And finally, release dates. If you buy a physical game, you have to wait for those pesky stores to actually open, or hope that they do like a midnight launch or something. But then again, you have to actually go there to get it. As opposed to digital games, where you can just stay up till midnight, start the download going, and then go to bed, or wait till midnight, download it, and play it straight away. On to the cartons. They may not take up physical space, but in a lot of cases, they'll take up more digital space than the physical edition. And if you're limited on hard drive size, PlayStation 5, this might be a problem. Eventually, at some point in the future, the game won't be available to be re-downloaded anymore. So if you accidentally delete it, or if you lose your console, or whatever happens, you may lose access to a game that you've already paid for. For example, Sony almost shut down the PlayStation 3 store a couple months ago, and then everyone kind of panicked and they decided to keep it a bit longer. But if they had and you didn't download any games, you would have lost them. Whereas I still have access to all of my Game Boy games from the 90s because they are physical cartridges. That being said, a lot of games these days come with huge day one patches, making the game pretty much unplayable without them, or literally unplayable without them. So there could come a time in the future when if you delete the updates of your games off your console and you try and play your physical games, they're also unplayable. Also, it's a lot more difficult to borrow or loan digital games, and you can't sell them or trade them in. Last year, I bought The Last of Us Part Two in the week that it was launched for a special launch price of $69. I played through the whole thing, I loved it, but it was heavy. And I was like, you know what? I'm probably not gonna replay this for a very long time, if at all. So I traded it into EB Games. I got about $40 for it. Haven't wanted to replay it since. And it's currently on sale on Amazon for $28 and part one is on sale for $11. So if I do ever wanna replay it again in the future, I will just buy it for less money than what I traded it in for. And if I never wanna play it again, then it's not just taking up space on my shelf for no reason. Some retailers like EB Games in Australia offer this thing where you can return a game within the week that you purchased it for any reason. So you can play a game for six or seven days and be like, I really just didn't like it. And you can return it. Good luck returning a digital game. The following are some more minimalism gaming tips. If you're not dying to buy a game that's just being released, wait a little while for it to go down in price or buy it secondhand. Finish games you already own. If you're anything like me, there's probably multiple games that you got when they were on sale or from a friend or something that you've never actually gotten around to playing or at least finishing. So why not finish those before you buy new ones? If you don't want the cases for games, they can sometimes be a lot cheaper if you just buy the actual disc or cartridge. I got my Switch while I was living in the UK and I knew that eventually I'll be moving back to Australia and I would have limited space. So I bought Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and Breath of the Wild secondhand without their cases for like $20 less than they would have been with their cases. And I saved money and I still got to play the games. Sharing or borrowing games. If you have a friend or family member that has the same console as you, why not share games? It can be a great way of saving money. Last but not least, the environment. Physical games require physical materials. Shockingly. Of course, digital games require big servers to store them, but a lot of materials such as plastic go into the creation of physical games, and then of course you have to ship them around the world, which is hardly environmentally friendly. In conclusion, I personally do a bit of a mix. If it's a new game in a series that I absolutely love, like Final Fantasy or Kingdom Hearts, or if it's cheaper than the digital version, 
I'll get the physical version. So pretty much any game I'm getting on launch day, I'll get the physical version. For games that I don't need to play immediately, I'll just wait for a good sale, which often means that I'll get it digitally. Overall, unless the digital version is a lot cheaper or it's a game that I really know that I'm going to like, I'll just get physical because if I don't love it, I can always trade it in, sell it or give it to a friend. So even though digital just sounds like it should be the more minimalistic option, it's not always the case. But you've got to do what works for you. In what ways do you want to be minimal? How minimal do you want to be with your video games? Etc. Etc. Figure it out. Or don't. Whatever. But remember, even if you go entirely digital, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's minimal. If you're buying games just because they're a good price but you actually have no real intention of playing them, you're still wasting your money on games that you're never going to play, so what's the point? I want to say a massive thank you to everyone who has subscribed in the uh, three months that I've been absent. How is this possible? Actually, I know exactly how it's possible. University. Yeah, I went back to uni and I thought to myself, I can easily keep up a video a week while I'm studying. Well, apparently not. But the semester's over and I'll try harder next semester. I don't want to go another three months without doing a video because that's kind of crazy. Thanks for subscribing, even in my absence. I do appreciate it. And there'll be new videos soon. So keep an eye out for that. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope that this video was entertaining enough for you slash you got some sort of... What's that word? Value. I'm going to go. I've got some things to get done, like editing. I'll see you soon, hopefully. Goodbye.